Okay, I'm going to go live now. Hello, everyone. We are just uh, waiting to start. Please feel free to um, join in and make yourself comfortable. Um, there is also a Portuguese translation um, here with this webinar. And so if you are requiring English to Portuguese uh, translation, um, this is uh, available via the globe button. The instruction is uh, right in the chat. So please feel free to change it to Portuguese if you need the Portuguese translation. Amazing. Okay. I believe we are ready to start. The room is uh, filling up um, and we are doing this webinar. There are um, four countries involved. So um, there's going to be a lot of conversations. Okay. So greetings, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of the participants here today. And also thank you to all of the panelists. Welcome to the global webinar for Project Symbio, Social Innovation Management for Bioplastics. On behalf of our partners from Poland, the United Kingdom, Brazil, and Canada, we express our deepest gratitude for your attendance. Now it's customary because we are hosting this in Canada to do a land acknowledgement. And where we are today, we are at Simon Fraser University. This is um, the host of the webinar for today. And our institution is located on the unceded ancestral and traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. Of course, I'm not alone and I'm joined by all of our partners in saying that the reason why we did our project is because of our collective commitment to the planet and to an equitable, sustainable, circular economy for us all. And our wonderful and exciting project was funded by the Transatlantic Partnership Grant for Social Innovation by our respective funding agencies to bring together four wonderful institutions. Simon Fraser University in Canada, where I am, the Federal University of Sao Carlos, Brazil, University of Warsaw, and University of Lodz in Poland, as well as Coventry University in the United Kingdom. And my goodness, did I introduce my name? <laughs> my name is Tamara Soma, by the way. My name is Dr. Tamara Soma, and I am a, an assistant professor here at Simon Fraser University. I got so excited to start, I forgot to introduce my name. I'm your host for today. Okay, so uh, the objective of our project is to use a social innovation approach to address the environmental and social challenges of bioplastics packaging, throughout its supply chain from production to end of life management in Brazil, in Canada, Poland, and the United Kingdom. And I will be explaining what social innovation means in a few, in a few slides uh, because that is the methodology that we all use. So the reason why research on bioplastics food packaging is very important is because the data is very clear. Plastics account for approximately 6% of global fossil fuel consumptions. So we do need alternatives to single-use plastics. And we need um, alternative 
to the linear food supply chain that exploits natural resources and the environment. And so this is where we, as an international research consortium, wanted to better understand the role of bioplastics food packaging. Now, as many of you know, uh, many of you also in the audience, um, as many of you are experts, um, bioplastics is a very general umbrella term that covers a range of products and are usually categorized based on their composition, which is bio-based, versus fossil fuel base and also decomposition, which is biodegradability. So in this figure in front of you, you will see a range of terminologies and different materials, but to simplify, our study primarily focused on bio base, which means that these packaging are made using all or part of renewable biomass. And so this can be corn, sugarcane, algae, and more. And our project also primarily focus on biodegradable. Biodegradable bio-based plastics can be broken down by microorganism in the environment and converted in natural sub into natural substances, such as water, carbon dioxide, and compost. And so considering the complexities of our food systems and the interconnected nature of environmental, economic, and social impacts, it is important to understand the role of bioplastics packaging in a circular economy. The principles of a circular economy includes preserving and enhancing natural capital by controlling finite stocks and balancing renewable resources. And the second principle of circular economy is optimizing resource yields by circulating products at the highest utility. So we kept this in mind, certainly, you know, the second principle when thinking about single use packaging. Now, the third principle to ensure system effectiveness in a circular economy is designing out negative externalities. So this means understanding the impact of the entire system from upstream to downstream at the collection and at the waste management phase. So let's talk about um, next, yes, about six years ago, basically, and this is a quote from the Ellen uh, MacArthur Foundation. Um, and so about six years ago, the Ellen MacArthur Foundation noted that biodegradable plastics rarely measure up to the circular economy ambition as they are typically compostable only under controlled conditions. And the foundation called for further research and they called for game changing innovations. So basically our international research consortium, we try to answer this call in trying to understand how the landscape of biodegradable bio-based plastics um, have changed um, and also to understand the baseline in the four countries. Now, social innovation was actually the one of the title of our funding grant. It was the Transatlantic Partnership Grant um, in Social Innovation. So therefore, social innovation was a key aspect and, and method that was used by all of the four countries. So the social innovation approach is a method that seeks to understand systems. And we do this by convening a variety of stakeholders from across the bioplastics landscapes. This means convening those managing regulations like policymakers, convening suppliers and the buyers, waste management professionals and others. And a social innovation workshop is, um, they're interactive, they involve a lot of collaborative work with stakeholders, and stakeholders may not always agree. And this is actually important um, because we operate within a complex systems where stakeholders don't necessarily agree. So that is often replicated um, in a social innovation workshop. And so we started the project, all of us, all of the four partners, by conducting key informant interviews to set the landscape and the best baseline and identify the convening questions. And after the key informant interview, we started the first workshop, which focused on understanding the system, followed by a second workshop on exploring solutions. 
with the final workshop being on prototyping solutions. And so now it's important to note that for the most part, all of our team members had to adapt the social innovations labs, um, which are typically done in person to a completely online format. So we did face some challenges that we had to overcome. And so today in this webinar, you will be hearing from all of our partner countries. Each partner will be speaking for about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and as you can see here on the slides, we engage with 239 participants um, all across the four countries. And so without further ado, I would like to introduce our next speaker. Um, and by the way, we will be doing the presentation um, based on the alphabetical order of the country. So we will have Brazil, followed by Canada, um, and then followed by uh, Poland, and then followed by the United Kingdom. And so next um, in line, we have our wonderful partners from the Federal University of Sao Carlos in Brazil, represented by Dr. Um, Laís Roncalo and Dr. Sandra Cruz. And so uh, colleagues, I will stop my sharing and I look forward to hearing your presentation. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, well, good. Uh, just a minute, please. Well, good morning or good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first of all, let me thank the organization of the Symbio Global Webinar. Our presentation was entitled The Opportunities and Challenges of the Bio-Based Plastic on the Stakeholders in Brazil. And uh, it will be presented by Laís and me. And it's a, a pleasure to be here and show and discuss important aspects related to bioplastics Mary in Brazil. Uh, in our presentation, we will focus on the main results obtained uh, with the project developed in our country using, of course, the methodology described by Tamara, uh, that means Social Innovation Lab. And uh, we will bring uh, the situation and the lacks regarding the bioplasts uh, in Brazil. Uh, Please, Belinda, next slide. Uh, now, I would like to introduce our team. Uh, Laís Roncalho is a postdoctoral research fellow of uh, Federal University of São Carlos. She is conducting this project on the front line. Uh, Rafaela Gutierrez is also integrating the Brazilian team. She is a research of University uh, of Toronto. And I, Sandra Cruz, I am a professor uh, of the chemistry department at Federal University uh, of São Carlos. Next slide, please. Uh, well, uh, our main objective is to address the, the opportunities and challenges of the bioplast across the stakeholders and uh, especially the informal waste collectors, which means the waste pickers uh, plastic recycling companies, vendors, producers, and policymakers. Uh, as everybody knows, Brazil is a large and diverse country. It's present at 27 federation states, divided in uh, five regions, a very large population, and uh, it presents different law in each state. Then uh, we focus our project in the Sao Paulo states, uh, which is the most developed in Brazil. And uh, however, uh, we identify some important stakeholders outside of the Sao Paulo states, so uh, they will be considered in our study. Uh, next slide, please. Um, 
Brazil uh, is a um, reference in terms of its biomass. That means Brazil uh, presents the greatest biodiversity uh, on the planet, uh, intense solar radiation, abundant wa water, climate diversity, large crops on the sugar cane in industry. So uh, Brazil has full capacity in development of more sustainable products such as bioplastics. Uh, however, bioplast market in Brazil is still incipient. There is uh, well, there's a lot of reasons for that, mainly uh, such economic obstacles in the production and lack of public policies approaching circular economy. To uh, achieve uh, the objective presented here, uh, we design our project in four steps. Please, next slide. Uh, first, the, we set the challenge, uh, understand the problem, then we did our first social innovation lab, uh, explore solutions with the second uh, social innovation lab, and finally prototype solutions with the third one that occurred last month. Uh, now, I invite uh, Laís to continue this presentation. Laís, the floor is yours. Thanks, Professor Sandra. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, next slide, please, Belinda. Uh, so, continuing the, the present, our presentation, to develop a, a common understanding of the, the main challenges and barriers in the production use and end-of-life management of bioplastic packaging. We did the 27 semi-structured interviews with stakeholders. The data obtained were analyzed and through the analysis of categories and previous quali qualitative uh, knowledge, convergent and divergent points uh, were identified between uh, the different stakeholders. Among the main categories, we highlight uh, materials and alternatives that are already being used to replace conventional and single-use plastics. The cost of, the, uh, of new technologies is still, that is still much higher compared to conventional plastics. Gaps in Brazilian, in Brazilian legislation uh, and standards for biodegradables. Uh, the society's lack of information about the conscious choice of packaging during consumption, and especially regarding its post-consumption disposal, and the social impacts for cooperatives and waste pickers, considering the future of biodegradable packaging. Next slide, please. Well, uh, based on the points highlighted, our combining questions were uh, defined to proceed with the methodology of the social innovation lab. We discussed uh, how can we advance in the discussion of norms and legislation while there is a lack of understanding about the types and terms associated with bioplastics? How is the disposal of each kind of waste and how to improve the recycling process? Uh, given that in Brazil, in Brazil, the conditions for composting are still not so effective, and there is no market for some post-consumer packaging. We also discussed how to expand the produ production and consumption of bioplastics, given that the cost uh, is still very high, and uh, it's difficult to standard standardize some process. Uh, and also, how to reduce this cost, uh, given the difficult uh, in scaling, and, uh, and the low tax uh, incentive, incentive, incentives for the, the, the industry. Next slide, please. Uh, so in, in our first workshop, 27 stakeholders were present. Uh, we discussed the such issues in three different groups in a break, break, uh, breakout session, and he used the Miro uh, interactive uh, whiteboard to help us with the discussion. Next, next slide. So uh, from, from the investigation regarding 
the convening questions, some possible solutions were outlined for discussion in our second workshop, uh, which was carried out with uh, only 13 stakeholders to discuss uh, the design of potential solution, such as we had a lot of uh, results, but um, uh, a little of our results, uh, application of tax on single use items. We had a discussion about impact, uh, mainly in the low income population and about improving the cost and accessibility of, the, uh, of new technologies. Next, please. Another issue discussed was about the great difficulties for society in identifying the, the different types of bioplastics and, and the, understand the, bio, the uh, real biodegradation process. As barriers, uh, the stakeholders men mentioned mainly public management and investment in education in general. Next, next slide, please. It was also discussed in this second workshop that among uh, the main factors that hinder the growth of the market for biopolymers from renewable and biodegradable or compostable sources. Stakeholders uh, say that volume increases, volume increase don't guarantee affordable prices. It's necessary uh, planning, of course, planning uh, to avoid incorrect flow that continues to damage the environment. In terms of involvement, government, university, and the industry with effective communication among them, innovation incentives and government regula regula regulatory uh, agencies are essential. And uh, as barriers, there is, a still, there is still a lack of investment in new technologies and supervision, uh, the greenwash practice. Greenwashing practice. Next slide. Next, next, not, not slide, not, yeah. Thank you. Uh, finally, we, we, uh, it was discussed uh, in order to avoid a negative impact on the waste speakers cooperatives, uh, that is important to include these professionals in the discussion. Some suggestions for these were uh, improve the waste speakers understanding of new technologies and bioplastics, training of these professionals through uh, mini courses, using illustrative blue booklets, and creation and application of easy to understand banners to identify different types of, of the, these materials. When, when uh, questioning uh, stakeholders about what is still lacking in Brazil for progress in waste management, they agreed, everybody agreed that the main need refers to recognition of the cooperative's work. According to them, uh, it's important the local governments assist and support these professionals about the collection, the uh, transport, separation processes, and remunerated uh, then for each process and service provided. Next slide, please. So our third workshop was recently on June 22nd, and uh, it was open to the public. Uh, based in our scenario, uh, we gave space for, for stakeholders to talk about their work. Uh, next, please. We divided um, uh, the event into four sessions. Next. And we had presentations uh, on legislation, market, waste management, and, uh, and research and development lines, different lines. Next, please. And uh, between each block of presentations and work, works, we had an interaction with, with uh, the, the, uh, the uh, an interaction with a debate, deba debate mediated by our team uh, with participants applying social innovation lab methodology, uh, bringing a parallel of, of what uh, we, we already developed in Brazil and what possible solutions uh, we can still apply in our reality. Uh, next slide, please. In terms of research dissemination, important part in our work. Uh, up to this moment, two articles have been published. One it is a legislative review in the context of the transition uh, from plastic to bioplastic scenario uh, in the Brazilian scenario. And another one is an analysis of the impact caused by the COVID-19 crisis for waste management, as well as for uh, waste pickers cooperatives in Brazil. Next, please. 
we also created the profiles on social media aiming to increase the process visibility uh, and also fo fo focusing uh, in, on disseminating, disseminating information, raising awareness and, guide, and guiding the population about general issues on the context of bioplastics in, in Brazil, specifically in Brazil. Uh, next, please. Uh, some result, results of this research were ventilated to in, uh, thir 13 interviews on different radios, TV, and digital media in our country, in Brazil. Next, please. And also, uh, some of these results were presented in three events, events uh, in the virtual meetings of materials and science in 2020 and 2021. And this year, uh, at a 20, uh, 2022 Global Conference on Polymers, Plastics and Composites in Budapest this March. Next, please. Only uh, there's a conclusion and considerations that we had we have made so far, made so far uh, from all the all the de de data obtained. We understand that in, in Brazil that it, that there is low credibility on the subject, uh, as well very low support and commitment from government towards the problem in in this research too. Uh, in general, we realize that Brazil still needs to solve major problems uh, of management, infrastructure, and social inclusion, so that the advanced uh, innovation can be carried out successfully. There are many gaps, many social gaps uh, to be tackled in order to the advancement in sustainability to be achieved. So next slide, please. Uh, with that, I, I, I end my, our presentation by thanking all the partners group at the Federal University of San Carlos, uh, the trash team for support, uh, all the single partner teams and our stakeholders for the development of this research. Uh, we are also grateful to Larissa Nardini, our undergraduate student for supporting our workshops. And uh, next, thank you all for, thank you all for your attention. Next slide. I thank you, everyone. Thank you for your attention. Thanks, Belinda. Thank you very much uh, to the Brazil uh, team, Brazil partners, Dr. Laís Roncalo and Dr. Sandra Andrea Cruz. Uh, before we continue uh, with the presentation, which is going to be Canada, uh, just to let you know, I've received um, several questions on whether or not you will be receiving the recording. So the answer is yes. If you have registered with our uh, with this webinar, you will also be uh, receiving um, an, a recording of this presentation. Um, um, and another thing that I needed to mention is that uh, because of the volume and just because of the multiple countries and uh, simultaneous translation, uh, we have we are going to do question and answers after all of the presentations are done. But in the meantime, if you have a question um, in your mind, please feel free to put it on the Q&A button. So you can click the Q&A button. And if it's in Portuguese, that's okay. I will get it translated. Um, and I will be looking through the questions and trying my best to moderate and uh, answer the questions that um, will be posed. So just to let you know, please feel free to put your Q&A um, question and answer, uh, sorry, question in the Q&A button on Zoom, right in the bottom of the screen. Okay, so next we have a wonderful speaker um, from Canada, Belinda Lee, who is the co-founder of the Food Systems Lab and also the Director of Innovation, and she will be presenting our Canadian research funded by uh, Social Science and Humanities Research Council. Thank you, Belinda. Great, thank you very much. So as Tamara said, I am Belinda Lee, and I'm going to be sharing with you some of the results from our findings from the Symbio Project in Canada. First of all, I'm going to start off with an overview of our process. So Tamara has already given an idea of what we did, and we followed the social innovation process over about a year, and we, uh, 
then did our interviews, our workshops all online. And the thing from this is because we had a very online process, it was really interesting to be able to talk to people from a bunch of different geographies. So even though it was a bit more challenging to do everything online, we had a great opportunity to have so many different people from so many different places. And we had a total of 57 research participants between the interviews and workshops from a variety of sectors representing different parts of the product life cycle for bioplastic packaging. We also had different levels and departments of government, researchers, and organizations. From the interviews, we had multiple polarities that surfaced. Polarities are outcomes that are considered desirable, but also appear to oppose each other. These indicate the challenge of integrating different viewpoints and goals. These polarities spanned across different themes in environmental, social, and economic factors. Here are some examples. How can we make bioplastics cost competitive to those made with fossil fuels while maintaining fair wages and working conditions, environmentally sustainable processes for raw materials and products? How can we divert more bioplastics to composting while generating high quality compost that is acceptable to agricultural and home gardening applications? How can we increase the share of bioplastics while avoiding proliferation of single use plastic packaging? So from all of this, we came up with an initial competing question of what role can bioplastics have as a competitive alternative to fossil fuel based plastics in a truly circular and equitable system. Now, one thing is this question was meant to be a start. So you'll see in the further slides how it evolves. The first thing that was interesting from our very first workshop is that the issues with bioplastics became apparent when we asked the participants how to describe bioplastics in one to two words. In this word cloud, you see here the words that occur the most include challenging, complicated, confusing, complex, and wood pulp. One lesson that came out of this is terminology. We often use the term bioplastics during the workshops because we wanted to be more inclusive, all different types. But for the most part in the Canadian context, we're talking about compostable plastics. What we learned is we should have probably started with compostable packaging to focus the conversations more. So for the rest of this presentation to put this lesson learned into practice, we are going to use the term compostable plastics. In the first workshop, we also did a systems mapping exercise to take a more systemic view on the compostable packaging life cycle. This identified parts of the system where there may be disconnects. Some key themes we found were that the research and design does not always reflect the whole product life cycle. There tends to be a disconnect between those who are designing the products and those who handle the waste. Since technologies and infrastructures take a lot of investment, we have a bit of a locking in effect, which can create inertia for change. And thirdly, across the product life cycle, there's inconsistent information and perceptions. A common example is users not knowing what to do with a compostable plastic package. Does it go in the green bin, the garbage bin, or the recycling bin? These disconnects gave us some hints as to where we might want to intervene in the system. So moving on to the second workshop, we found three general themes for different interventions regulation, consumer behavior, and alternate systems. Regulation includes regulatory standards for compostable plastic testing and labeling, regulating single use items, enforcing current federal marketing guidelines, and banning bio compostable plastics that are not compatible with current composting systems. The consumer behavior theme included influencing purchasing and disposal of goods and the packaging that is used and educating the public about compostable plastics and composting. Thirdly, alternative systems includes shifting towards a reusable system and culture, promoting a sharing economy and increasing collaboration and communication across the supply chain. One thing 
once we were getting towards the end of the second workshop, and so you can see on the screen some of the examples of the games that we played and some of the mapping that we did and the business model canvas that we have filled out was that our scope was a bit too big. It was great to look at all the stages of the compostable plastic packaging life cycle to build a good understanding of what was going on at each stage. But we noticed we were not necessarily well positioned to intervene at all the stages, nor do we have the resources to keep the scope so big. So we decided to pare down our focus and change our plans for the third workshop. A few key assumptions that we made for this third workshop is that technology is not going to change overnight. Facilities also can't be built overnight. We have an imperfect system, and so we're going to work inside of it. We have these compostable plastic packaging, and there's going to be more and more of them. So what we, can we do to optimize the middle of the supply chain while the longer term changes need to be made in terms of infrastructure and facilities? Since we were doing work, virtual workshops anyway, we figured we can use some virtual tools to learn about some solutions that target the middle of the product life cycle. And we did a bit of prototyping while also understanding the existing system and seeking potential solutions at the same time using serious games. In the first game called Can You Sort It, we prototyped the solution of having standardized labeling for plastic products. So compostable plastic packaging can be more clearly distinguished from other types of products. That was a really common theme we heard when we were in the second workshop. So we figured we would test it out a bit. And then in the second game, Symbio City, we did a simulation of a city where all single use plastics were banned to explore options for how different parts of the food sector could function without single use plastics. So in that game, we were kind of just really pushing our thinking and expanding our horizons a little bit to something that perhaps right now might not be a reality, but could be in the future. So first of all, here are some results from the Can You Sort It game. The groups that played this sorted about 54 to 72% of the packaging products correctly. So that means about a quarter to a half of the products were incorrectly sorted. Considering that acceptable contamination rates for recycling and compost are usually in the single digit percentage points, this can be a challenge. In the discussion following the game, some of the challenges and opportunities that we identified included, some people pay attention to the color and others the symbol. And it might be better to just use symbols since colors can mean different things in different places due to prior associations and to keep it simple. And it can also be an accessibility thing if uh, people are colorblind. The issue of biodegradability also arose and some participants flagged that the biodegradable labels can be easily mistaken for compostable. So perhaps those need to be restricted to say marine or agricultural industries. And thirdly, educating the public on new symbols and scaling up standardization of labels at the global level could be beneficial since so much plastics manufacturing and packaging of products takes place outside of Canada. In the Symbio City game, we had groups design a process to package different products in scenarios without using single use plastics. These scenarios were packaging cheeses and bakery products in a grocery store, serving takeout food and beverages in a mall food court, and packaging greens and berries at an urban farm. Here are some of the key concerns and needs for a single-use plastic-free city to function from playing this game and the discussion that followed. First of all, all three groups found that the proposed changes would be more feasible if they occurred at a systems level, with standardization and centralization. This could mean implementing the same changes across all vendors at a farmer's market or food court, or establishing the changes across an entire municipality or region. Centralized arrangements for managing the system would, always contrib would also contribute to better outcomes. Participants discussed that by standardizing and centralizing the changes, the issues of cost, competition, consumer uptake would be reduced. Each of the groups also had concerns related to food safety and acknowledged that 
With the right system set up, these concerns could be mitigated, but it's still very important. Another theme was local systems, and the groups all identified that single-use plastic ban can present exciting opportunities for more localized systems, products, and supply chain. However, another thing to consider is that environmental impact might not just be related to single-use plastic. The groups overwhelmingly said that the proposed options would be more environmentally friendly, but they could be trade-offs between the environmental impact of safe food waste and single-use plastics, and to be able to think of the whole scope of environmental impact. Lastly, a cross-cutting theme is that the participants emphasize the need for these systems to be equitable, inclusive, and affordable. Otherwise, the changes could disqualify people who are unable to participate in a deposit system or purchase and carry reusable items. So all in all, from this process, we did identify a few roles for compostable packaging in the food sector. The first is potentially using it more on the distribution side and the back end of operations, say with farms, where there's more control over the material flow and products can be better standardized. The second, if technologically possible, is to focus technological development on reusable and durable packaging so that it can support a smaller inner loop of the circular economy and use products for a longer time. The last role is supporting a domestic circular system, so packaging is produced locally and returned to producers at the end of life, so they can be made into new products or composted. In other words, for the last ones, it's like having a very localized form of extended producer responsibility where the whole product cycle is closed. To conclude, we learned a lot about challenges and opportunities for compostable plastic packaging in Canada through this process. It not only improved our understanding of the role of compostable plastic packaging in a circular economy, but also sparked new connections and aha moments. That's the value of social innovation labs in bringing people together who don't usually interact. As one participant said, it's great to hear from people working on the infrastructure side of the issue and learn from them. Learning that throughput from composting systems is only 20 to 30 days is huge and to be reminded that compost is a product with value and not a waste stream. Thank you very much for listening to that presentation. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Belinda. Um, just to let you know, I am uh, monitoring the question and answer and I am collecting them. So please feel free to put in your question and we will be answering them at the end of the presentation. And again, a reminder for those of you who are just joining in that we will also be sharing with you the recording of this webinar. Okay, wonderful. So next we have our colleagues from Poland, from the University uh, of Warsaw. Uh, Warsaw School of Economics, and then also uh, the University of Lodz, um, Drs. Aneta Pluta Zaremba and Dr. Marta Reszniewska. Um, apologies if I um, mistakenly pronounced your name. Um, so uh, please feel free to share your presentation. We look forward to this. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That was okay. Thank you, Tamara. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my, na my name is Marta Reszniewska and on the behalf of uh, all Polish Symbio team, SGH Warsaw School of Economics and the University of Łódź, firstly, I would like to say thank you for the organization of this global webinar. I am pleased to start the presentation entitled Stimulating the Biopackaging Market Development in Poland. I will present it together with Dr. Aneta Pluta Zaremba. Good morning, everyone. Stronger together, as Polish Symbio team, we are conducting the project aimed at developing social innovation to address the challenges in applying biopackaging in food supply chains for a circular economy. Let me please present, together with Aneta, the main results of Symbio project in Poland. We started in September 2020. The first stage uh, of the the first stage of the Symbio project defining challenges was aimed at identifying key activators, drivers, 
and barriers to the application and co-creation of packaging eco-innovation for bio-packaging supply chain management, as well for the life cycle management of packaging produced from bio-based and biodegradable mm -hmm. polymers, taking uh, into account the circular economy principles. To meet all these goals, the extensive dialogue with the key stakeholders of food biopackaging supply chains in Poland was carefully designed and carried out. The second phase uh, of the Symbio project, understanding problems, was focused on in-depth analysis and understanding of the main problems and barriers to the development of supply chains of food biopackaging, including compostable packaging, for food in Poland in accordance with the principle of the circular economy. The main objectives of the third stage, exploring solutions, were to identify and assess potential solutions dedicated to the causes and problems and barriers to the development of the biopackaging market in Poland in accordance with the rules of the circular economy. The fourth stage uh, started in November 2021. Uh, it's aimed at prototyping chosen key solutions. To meet all the project objectives, we performed 29 in-depth interviews and social innovation lab workshop with several discussion panels. It was a big challenge, but thanks to the openness and commitment of the environmentally responsible stakeholders of the Symbio project, we managed to implement all planned research and development activities. The Participants of the Symbio project in Poland are both external and internal stakeholders in the supply chains of food biopackaging. As a result, the Symbio project launched the platform for cooperation and synergy of competences of stakeholders from the private and public sectors, mainly represented by company owners, directors, managers, specialists and clients. The total number of individual participants in Sibiu project in our country is 67. The starting point for all the research and development activities in the project was the analysis of the domestic and foreign uh, literature on the supply chain of compostable packaging. Further, in this first stage of project, uh, the <coughs> in-depth interviews with the project stakeholders allowed for a broad diagnosis of the biopackaging market in our country in terms of drivers, stimulating factors and uh, barriers. Uh, let me please to introduce the main characteristic of uh, biopackaging market in our country, so the results of the stage one. Uh, <coughs> One, the market demand for food biopackaging is steadily increasing. This positive trend continued uh, despite the COVID-19 pandemic. The scale and the nature of the demand are mainly uh, determined by economic, legal, social, and environmental factors. A demand for biodegradable, including compostable packaging, is expected to increase in future in Poland. His stakeholders are aware of opportunities and threats related to the development of food biopackaging market. They pose important questions about the structural changes in the market, the potential and scale of using renew <coughs> renewable raw materials for the production of bio-based, biodegradable biopolymers, uh, as well as chances for the reduction of food waste. And uh, compostable packaging forms an important future segment of food packaging market. Compost can be used uh, in an environmentally friendly way. However, currently in terms of the small scale of compostable packaging application in the food sector, they still have a niche significance in Poland. <clears throat> the driving force uh, behind the development of the compostable packaging sector are companies strategically oriented at in introducing certified products to the domestic and foreign market and competing mainly by developing product protest, uh, process and technological innovation. 
Thank you. Next slide. In order to effectively stimulate the biopackaging market in Poland, first, we identify main problems and barriers that hinder its development. A broad diagnosis of the market carried out together with our stakeholders allowed for the identification of the following four problems. First one, a low share of biopackaging, including compostable packaging in the market food packaging in Poland. Second, a low awareness and consumers' tendency to buy food products in biopackaging. Third, uh, insufficient um, social and environmental enterprise responsibility in the packaging supply chains for circular economy. And finally, low level of compostable waste packaging development. To better understand these four problems, they were carefully analyzed. Consequently, the 16 barriers and the 63 causes were recognized. The cascade approach of the conduct analysis was based on the use of the four diagrams resembling uh, Ishikawa diagram. The obtained list of problems, barriers, and causes became an input to the next stages of the project, which will be presented by Dr. Aneta Pluta Zaremba. Aneta, please, the floor is yours now. Thank you, Marta. And continuing our journey through the research carried out in the Simba project in Poland, let's move on to the third stage. Its aim was to identify solutions that would overcome the causes of the four problems and the barriers. We were, we were looking for solutions together with internal and external representatives of biopackaging supply chains during three discussion panels. The results exceeded our expectations. Panel participants proposed a total of 53 solutions. And for the first problem and its causes, 10 solutions were identified. Uh, stakeholders consider an increase in the number of production plants producing bioplastics in Poland and improving the cooperation with organizations performing R&D projects, the most urgent. The participants of the discussion panel jointly proposed five potential solutions to eliminate the key causes of the second problem. The most urgent and difficult solution to implement is the inclusion of uniform information on the compostability placed on the packaging. For the third problem, internal and external biopackaging supply chain stakeholders developed as many as 29 potential solutions. However, the most important ones were those that create conditions for the functioning of supply chains and enterprises. So, very urgent and difficult to implement is designing a national strategy for the development of the biopackaging market, including compostable packaging. Subsequently, the discussion panel led to the definition of uh, two most urgent of, out of the 10 proposed solutions for the first problem. Firstly, developing a strategy for the compostable packaging market with operational documents. And secondly, establishing an association of bioplastic processors or producers of compostable packaging obtain from biodegradable, renewable raw materials. Uh, due to the multitude of potential solutions, we decided to select three solutions for the next fourth stage of the Symbio project as the most urgent for eliminating the identified problems and barriers. So to the prototyping process, were directed, creating a national strategy, establishing an industry organization and technological platform. Next slide, please. Thank you. Intensive dialogue with stakeholders in the fourth stage of the Symbio project allowed for the development of assumptions for the implementation of these three solutions. The dialogue included two discussion panels attended 
by representatives of both internal and external stakeholders of the biopackaging supply chains in June. In prototyping solutions, the Symbio team focused on the development of the market and supply chains of bioplastic packaging that are biodegradable and made of bio-based materials. Within its framework, the segment of compostable packaging has been specified. Uh, in line with the recommendation of stakeholder representatives, the priority was to design the national strategy for the compostable packaging market in Poland. Such a strategy would act as an umbrella for the activities of internal stakeholders of supply chains, providing clear guidelines for the functioning of enterprises on the compostable packaging market. Uh, recognizing the need for a holistic and systematic approach, four pillars were identified. They cover transparent legal system and legislation, as well as easy access to properly addressed legal provisions. Investments as a high level of financing initiatives and support for innovators. Innovations understood as good practice and the best product process, technological and organizational solutions, and education builds institutional clients and consumers on the types of biopackaging, as well as the specifics of compostable packaging, including the labeling and certification. The national strategy would play a key role both in stabilizing the conditions and in stimulating the development of the compostable packaging market at each of the macro, meso, and microeconomic levels. Uh, the Symbio research uh, team also focused on the need to prototype an industrial organization then that creates the conditions for, uh, for and support collaboration between supply chain stakeholders on compostable packaging using. Industrial organization may connect companies to integrate and become one strong entity that works for the benefit of all parties involved through representative, educational, research and lobbying functions. It allows for the achievement of added value through trust-based cooperation in a network of various stakeholders. The organization becomes an opportunity to exchange knowledge and experience and eliminate barriers to accelerate the development of the compostable packaging market. On the basis of the latest trends in the development of the circular economy related to the implementation of modern technological solutions and numerous voices of stakehold stakeholders, a decision was also made to prototype a multi-sided B2B digital platform. The platform is a modern tool gathering in one place participants of compostable packaging supply chains with various scopes and goals of the activities. The platform opens an opportunity to design, implement and improve various functions that meet the needs of stakeholders in the field of information dissemination, education, stakeholder communication, as well as stimulating and strengthening cooperation. It would give mutual support for platform participants, transfer of knowledge and experiences between participants take, taking into account the specificity of the Polish market. Summarizing, a multi-sided B2B platform may play a key role in building relationships between stakeholders to stimulate and catalyze the development of the compostable packaging market in Poland. Summarizing uh, three years of the project, it's worth emphasizing that. Firstly, the diagnosis of the Polish biopackaging market proved that it's a niche but very prospective market. To trigger its development, different types of innovations must be developed and implemented addressing both chances and challenges. Um, secondly, 
an in-depth analysis of the problems, barriers, and the causes was possible through fruitful dialogue in the multi-stakeholder perspectives. The Symbol project has become a unique platform integrating stakeholders of biopackaging supply chains with a great potential in our country. Designing solutions to multidimensional problems was possible through the synergy of stakeholder ideas. The three most important social innovations prototyped during the project are national strategy, industry organization and technological platform. And the last rapid prototyping in the last stage of the Symbio project um, uh, is the last stage of the Symbio project but it is the beginning of the stakeholder integration for open collaborative innovations to achieve the common over, uh, overarching goal, the biopackaging market development in line with the circular economy principles. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, we disseminated the results of our research and um, cooperation with the stakeholders of the biopackaging market by publishing papers and participating in many industry and business conferences. As you can see, members of the Polish Symbio team, team performed in 17 events in total. In the coming weeks, we will take part in further conferences and spread the knowledge about compostable packaging in society. For example, we will conduct lessons for children and open lectures for adults as part of the Science Festival in Warsaw. Thank you very much for your attention. Wonderful. Thank you so much to um, the wonderful presentation from our partners in Poland, uh, Dr. Aneta and Dr. Marta. Um, so again, just uh, to remind you that I have been collecting questions and uh, this is very great. And so we are going to answer them all at the end. Um, and so next we have our final, final presentation from our partners in the United Kingdom at Coventry University, uh, represented by Dr. Macarena Beltran and Dr. Dr. Benny Chahiono. So uh, please feel free to start your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Tamara. So I believe that Macarena will share the slides. Okay, good afternoon, everyone from the UK. Good morning for those who are in Brazil, probably, and also in um, Canada. Uh, my name is Benny Chahiono. I'm Professor of Sustainability and Supply Chain Management at Coventry University. Uh, with me, we have uh, Dr. Macarena Beltran to represent the whole team of uh, Symbio in the UK, uh, Dr. Jordan, Jordan Lazelle, Dr. David Beck, and also Dr. Anna Bogos. So today we're going to um, share our experience in running the Social Innovation Management uh, Lab for Bioplastics Symbio in the UK. So let's take a look. First of all, let's take a look at our journey. So where we are in the journey. So first of all, the project itself is funded by the um, social innovation um, call of the transatlantic partnership through the UKRI and the UK, um, particularly the ESRC, Economic and Social Research Council. So we started off our research in October 2020 by carrying out uh, 16 semi-structured interviews to stakeholders of bioplastics. And we, do, we did this to understand uh, various things, the markets, the barriers, and also the opportunities uh, that the bioplastics um, might bring. And then the uh, Social Innovation Lab itself as you have uh, heard numerous times today, we have done three times. So the first one is seeing the system and then designing the solutions before we prototyping the solutions. So the first social innovation lab just in May, in March, 2021. Uh, at that time, as you remember, we are in the middle of the pandemic. So we carried out this um, lab online. And then in June 2021, we continued with the second um, social innovation lab also uh, online. 
And luckily in November, 2021, we uh, carried out the third social innovation lab uh, using the hybrid modes. Yeah. So at that time, uh, we, are, we in the UK, we already opened our universities to visitors. So we carried out these activities on campus, Coventry campus. Um, for each event, um, we produce reports that are available um, in the public domain. I'm pretty sure that at the end of this, we will, uh, at the end of the slides, you will be able to see the slides or the link where you can then download uh, our reports. The last report is under preparations, should be available very, very soon. So as part of the dissemination uh, process, we have also delivered a number of presentations to our key stakeholders, um, consumer organizations, uh, Garden Organics, for example, and also some networks, for instance, uh, BioLadies Network. We've also produced some blogs and press releases, a case study of bioplastics, um, which also been included in our um, circular economy modules. So we designed a modules and we included the outcomes of this research into our modules. Okay, so next we're going to look at um, the structures of these presentations. But before that, um, we, I want to, to share the participants of our lab. So across the interviews and the three Symbio labs uh, running from October to November 2022, we have collected or we have, um, we have been joined by 83 participants in total and mostly coming from acad academia, 46%. Uh, and also from waste management sectors, 14%. We also have the government uh, representations uh, and also local governments in particular. Uh, but more importantly, we have um, been joined by colleagues from a number of companies who produced uh, uh, bioplastics products and also uh, some consumers who are using the products. So Macarena will then uh, take over from me in a few moments. Uh, she's going to explain in great detail the outcomes from the first social innovation lab, the second social innovation lab uh, in designing solutions, and also the, social, the third or the final innovation lab, which looks into the prototype, mm -hmm. prototyping the solutions before uh, proposing the final recommendations. Over to you, Macarena. Thank you. Thank you. Hopefully, uh, you are still there listening to all the presentations. <laughs> so uh, let me take you to the, this uh, journey. At the beginning, we, um, as Benny mentioned, we conducted the first lab. And the, the objective, we want to understand the system uh, but also identify the barriers and opportunities and understand the future possibility for packaging supply chain. In the UK, we frame our research for bio-based biodegradable products. So this was our uh, target products. So as uh, you can see here uh, in the examples, um, we have, we developed three tasks with the stakeholders. And at the beginning, we asked them to identify, identify the place in the system, seeing the system, and also uh, the barriers and opportunities through this supply chain. So, so using uh, Myro, um, the stakeholder uh, suggested and uh, corrected and this model that we um, built together. Of course, have, you have already uh, heard from the different teams that the uh, waste management uh, is lacking for the bioplastic. Um, in the UK, of course, it exists a closed loop system, which is integrated product to compost solution. Uh, a product that goes through the retail, they don't have a clear waste management at the moment. So with the stakeholder, we created different ways 
and different ideas based on technology from other countries um, to develop the waste management and the connection with the composting operator and the anaerobic digestion. So from the from the first find from the finding of the uh, first lab, we got ten recommendations. Now, as you can see, the recommendations were related to labeling producers, uh, certifications, education. So in order to um, uh, continue the conversation with the stakeholder, we summarize the solution in six clusters. So the first part. It was the key, the communication with the consumers, educational programs, certification standards and guidelines, specific product and more fit talk, end of life and policies. So from this uh, six cluster, we moved to the second lab, which was identify this promising solution and also explore the future pathway for improving the sustainable uptake of bioplastic packaging, and also uh, obtain a clear understanding of the future possibilities. Um, so, uh, so first of all, the stakeholder prioritized uh, the solution. So for them, solution related to communication with the consumer and certification standard guideline and of life. Um, got the priority. And also we asked them how they see the solution over the next 10 years. So uh, we got an interesting um, suggestion here in the communication with the consumer. First one, it was the reduction of the complexity of the messaging. So, so, this, is, uh, so this was a key point, how we can reduce the complexity, how we can communicate better with the consumers. Um, the other was about the terminology, the correct identification of bioplastic, and in our case for bio-based, biodegradable plastic, and also, of course, the appropriate uh, disposal. Um, other critical thing was easy to read labeling. Now we have these logos and we, we have this logo label that people don't recognize, so there is an opportunity to improve this part. Then the certification standard guidelines, of course, the regulatory tools for waste management. So in addition to the uh, current certification, um, they suggested other regulatory tools for waste management um, regarding to that also the definition of minimum requirement for processing these products and also a logo that um, communicate compliance has this is regarding the different kind of uh, label that are at the moment. Um, well, also in terms of end of life, um, the evidence that uh, bioplastic can completely degrade um, and also the appropriate infrastructure uh, to save bioplastics um, in the UK. So finally, for the, the typing solution, we use, um, we use a, a hybrid event and also um, gamification theories uh, to collect the information with the stakeholders. So we test a prototype certain solution, what we call this uh, social innovation lab container. Uh, you can see some photos there, um, evaluate the feasibility, practicality, and potential impact of solution, and also identify and assess promising solution for field prototype. It was a, was a really interesting um, um, workshop. Uh, so we invited the expert, uh, and then we um, uh, in examined with them or uh, the specific products, the end of life and policies and certification standards so to understand the feasibility and viability of the solution. And also we prototype certain products. So the image that you can see here are the products that we prototype. It was the compostable ready meal tray, also the food caddy liner and the coffee pot. So you can see some here, some photos also of the event and the participant in the sessions. So, so by playing the, this board game, 
Solo they were to participant had the opportunity to think about the resources needed, but also how to align the interests in each other. And this is related with the introduction by Belinda, um, because of course different stakeholders they have different interests. But the, the key issue in a social innovation lab is how we put this together. So, for example, uh, we have um, the stakeholder created this kind of bridge technology for, um, for food caddy liners. So, so, an extended version of the food caddy liner that we have today where maybe mixing cellulose materials, but also other bio-based, biodegradable materials. And the reason is because consumer will easily differentiate them. So this is one of the main problems that we have that uh, the consumer, they cannot differentiate the um, compostable plastic with traditional plastic. And also uh, they uh, foresee this might penetrate the, mark, the market faster um, co contributing to the consumer behavior change, but also allow the certification standard and waste management process evolve. And so then open the door for other compostable plastics. Uh, also as part of the game, we developed certain scenario. One of the scenario was the climate uh, change crisis and is in this case, the stakeholder put the urgency on the um, downstream process. So anaerobic digestion, industrial composting for the collection of these um, um, products, but also supported by carbon reporting that it will for business organizations. So the finding here was uh, about um, cooperation because the cooperation was a key, key finding in trying to find the solution for these products to, uh, to um, align the supply chain between the retailers of course, and the waste management and the brands. Uh, also in terms of salt contamination at the end of life, also um, the consumer focus. So, uh, so each solution need to be developed with a consumer focus in mind. Um, also in terms of the certification, how the regulation will play the part here, um, ensuring the business abides by certification commission, and also the cost. The cost was one of the main barrier, uh, given the brands need to invest in the development of the new bioplastic materials. So um, finally, um, so the, the project has shown how collaboration through a a social innovation approach can make significant contribution to understanding and overcoming the challenge. Uh, but also we, we want to emphasize here that any solution has to integrate the communication with the consumer, end of life, policies, certification, standard labeling, education, and the research and development of, of specific products. So, in terms of recommendation, we, at the end, um, we uh, develop an analysis against the EU and UK policies. So based on the suggestion by the stakeholder and the matching with the um, policies, uh, we provide a aid recommendation uh, from the UK point of view. First is expand research and development for products that produce so bio-based and biodegradable products that are alternative to hard to recycle plastic or prone to contamination or provide extra environmental benefits over other materials. So we saw this is the target for, the, for this kind of products. And also uh, it's important that we continue evidencing the sustainability of, the, of this product, looking at the life cycle. This more evidence needs to be there as well. Also graded investment in the industrial composting and anaerobic digestion. Um, also um, create disposal and collection route for the consumers, um, greater accountability and collaboration to implement the certification standard and does need to be aligned with the 
labeling, but also with the waste management procedures. A comprehensive recycling marketing strategy. We also call this, this is kind of industrial action invitation for the industry um, to join together and, and develop these kind of strategies. Um, developing a policy framework, as you know, policy at the moment is, uh, there is no policy framework dedicated to bioplastic. And um, so there is pieces in different kind of policies. Um, educational program uh, focus to removing the confusion from labeling and providing a memorable advice to encourage the right and you know, procedure. And finally, develop educational program aimed at home composters. So this is our links here. We are turning with you after the presentation of the, the recording. Um, so thank you very much. That's the end of the, our presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Macarena Beltran and Dr. Betty Chahiono, our partners from Coventry University in the UK. Um, so wonderful. Now we have come to the section on question and answer. And we have about you know 30 minutes or so, and I have been collecting numerous questions. So I hope we will get to all of them. Um, and so uh, please feel free, if you still have not um, posed your questions yet, please feel free to put it on the Q&A and we will do our best to answer all of them from and, and you know get make sure that we get like you know perspective from the different countries wherever possible okay so this uh, is an important question the first question i'm gonna uh, go ahead and ask all of you um so there is this common theme around uh, labeling confusion complexity around definition contamination because of this confusion and i know that all of the four countries you know we were constantly discussing the challenge of definition. So this is a definition question. So we can start with Canada and then maybe one or two of the partners can contribute um, just be, to preserve time. So what were some of the challenges faced around definitions, particularly with biodegradable and compostable packaging? And maybe uh, Belinda, if you can answer maybe from the Canadian perspective around that question, um, and then I'll invite maybe one or two of the partners. Thanks. Yeah, that's a really good question about how the terms biodegradable and compostable were defined in Canada. And that was one thing that I highlighted in the presentation and, and we'll, we'll kind of elaborate a little bit more on now is that when we started off, we knew that all those terms were there, but because our for our project, we wanted to be inclusive of more different types of bioplastics, then we, we encompass biodegradable and compostable all together. And one thing that's, I think, really challenging about that is that, that those are two very different things, but they can be easily confounded because of uh, it could be one um, awareness, but also just having um, not really any stringent requirements for how you would market a product and and i think that was something that's consistent everywhere else as well so yeah i, I think like that's part of the reason we did prototyping related to having the different labels and we found from that game that we played that relying on people to sort things into the correct categories is uh is quite challenging so I would say we we haven't really figured it out, but we've figured out a few key issues. That's great, and that that whole process about social innovation is that transformative inter so that iterative process of continuously learning and evolving. And so that's a great answer. Thank you so much for um, addressing some of those challenges around definition. Um, I, I'm wondering if any of the partners would like to contribute on whether they face um, similar issues around, you know, the kind of the broad scope of the nature of, of the project and then like having to really narrow down and then maybe having the different voices in the table, like working on different angles of bioplastics um, and if you are going to answer please feel free to turn on your video because then we can make sure that uh, we can see your lovely faces um, 
So, so let me see. Grażyna yeah. speaking from oh, Poland. Perfect, please, okay. yes. Yeah. Uh, well, first, to meet the grant requirements, I would like to inform that the Symbio project in Poland is implemented under the Transatlantic Platform Program and in Poland is financed by the National Center for Research and Development. And now I will continue answering, you know, just uh, um, obligations. Uh, the question about the biodegradability and compostability is very important uh, issue in Poland. There is a mix of terms of definitions uh, that uh, at the beginning we um, had to deal with. And uh, the first step, very important for the good of, of the project aim and to the satisfaction of our stakeholders uh, who are um, highly environmentally responsible, uh, was to uh, recognize which packaging uh, segment we need to um, develop. And uh, we know today that not each packaging that is biodegradable is at the same time compostable. Um, there was a question um, among uh, the list in the list about the bioplast uh, about the microplastic and the influence on our health and so on. So uh, we right now know that uh, we need to focus on the bio based uh, on the bio based and biodegradable packaging segment and especially uh, stimulate the development of the compostable packaging as the, um, it seems the best alternative, the best alternative in terms of uh, human health and environmental um, protection, uh, the best alternative to the conventional uh, packaging. So, so, so this is the, the, uh, the, the answer yeah, from Poland, yeah, thanks. That's great. So um, perhaps I will welcome one more answer from any of the partners, either Brazil or UK. But um, if not, I'm going to wait for a few seconds. I'm going to move on to the next question. Let's wait a few seconds. One, mm. two, three. Oh, yeah, yes, uh, there's uh, partners from please, Brazil. Yes. Yeah. First, it's, it will, uh, I, I will be first. Uh, this is a, a, a really an important issue in, in Brazil. We also note the, the, this difficult in differentiating the terms, uh, especially for general population, consumers, anyway. Uh, the term compostable uh, refers to a product or material that can be biodegraded uh, under specific cir circumstances, specific conditions, uh, unlike biodegradation. Biodegradation uh, is uh, uh, entirely a uh, natural process. Composting, uh, composting require, requires uh, human intervention. However, it's complicated because uh, we must be careful with biodegradable ones from fossil sources because we can make the, the problem, we continue the problem or, or make the problem worse by decomposing plastic into microplastics. Uh, it's still a very controversial, controversial discussion, and we need to advance in this in this way. That's amazing, and actually, your um, answer just um, uh, partially answered one of the other question around, you know, does composting bioplastics actually eliminate microplastics? Uh, do you want to elaborate further on that, um, Laís, or you feel like? So that's one of the question that was asked. Does composting bioplastics actually eliminate microplastics yes yes it's important to eliminate microplastics okay so maybe we can move on to the next question um quickly so uh this is a question that is talking about you know the the negative impact of the accumulation of single-use plastics and actually um there is an infographic uh, that Belinda Lee will share on the chat um, in terms of just the accumulation of single use plastics and the impact. And so the question by one participant is, okay, so if, um, you know, are people around the world actually negatively impacted by the accumulation of single use plastic? And if so, you know, what, what are the kind of implications of um, this answer on, on finding solutions? And I guess this is why we actually did our bioplastics research because we were interested in alternatives. Um, and so does anyone want to kind of answer this question um, in general about, you know, what are the implications of um, 
our study in a sense on finding more sustainable packaging solutions. Okay, I just shared a few infographics. So, so I'll, I'll talk more about that more generally before going into the specifics. And, and this was part of the motivation for us as well is that as we know, especially with single use plastics, they last a really long time in the environment and it has become a really big issue in oceans. And Simon Fraser University, we're, we're by the coastline. So we, we, we kind of can see the impacts of this in our marine environments. And if you, you look at that one 2040 outcomes by scenario, you that's where you can really see all the different ways that we can make some changes. So business as usual to working on collection and disposal and recycling and reduction. But really what we need is system change in the circular economy approach because it, it actually ends up being the lowest cost approach. And that's one thing that we need to remember is that right now we think we can continue with business as usual because it's cheaper, but over the long term, it actually costs us a lot, like the environmental pollution costs us a lot. And so that's why we need to look at ways in throughout the entire system on ways to not have uh, so many plastics. And then if we are using plastics, use them in a way that reduces how much we need to produce. And then if we have any that are left over, retain the value instead of just disposing them. So in terms of, yeah, I guess our findings is that there, there is a role for, for compostable plastics within our system, but we need to be a bit more specific about their role so that we can work towards this larger goal of a circular economy and to focus on the reuse um, aspects and still integrate this technology because it is really useful for us. Yeah, that's great. And um, and actually your answer is also kind of emphasizing the point that uh, I think was highlighted by all of the countries, you know, across the Atlantic is that there are there's a lot of confusion. And, and, and so when you talk about like kind of like simplifying, harmonizing and, and really having a focused approach, I think that's one of the, the ways that we can address, you know, the, the confusion that then results into a lot of um, negative external uh, impact. So uh, this is an, another question. This is actually a question for our Poland team um, and a big congratulations to them um, as the participant noted um, here, the audience noted um, on the co cooperation of the stakeholders of the value chain. So the question for the Polish team is, um, is there food waste separation and collection programs in the municipalities in Poland at the residential and institutional level? And also is certification of compostable packaging voluntary in Poland or um, mandatory? Uh, thank you, Tamara, for reading the, uh, the question because I had to join again the, the meeting and the list of the question is, uh, you know, uh, invisible for me right now. Uh, I don't know why, but I see the chat, but the list is still, so thanks a lot for, for, uh, for reminding. Uh, thank you very much for this question. Um, of course, uh, in Poland, there is an obligation to uh, segregate, to select, uh, segregate waste and to collect, of course, including bio waste. And bio waste stream um, includes uh, food waste in general. Um, however, there are still problems with the segregation of some food products, such as, for example, uh, meat or, or, or bread. Uh, well, they usually end up in mixed uh, waste, um, while uh, meat is uh, often regarded by public administration and composting plants as a product that reduces the quality of compost. So uh, still in Poland, in terms of circularity and the composting process and food uh, waste management, there is uh, um, um, there is a challenge to, to segregate a proper um, waste streams to achieve the, the clean uh, compost. 
However, of course, uh, um, answering uh, the, 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 the waste management system in Poland is regulated on each level. So, so um, both um, like consumer um, and enterprises um, are obliged to, to segregate, to collect, to identify all the waste and put them in the proper bin. And um, in Poland, the taxes for, for the waste are still increasing. So the, uh, this is the, the um, we can assess that uh, this uh, shows that uh, the waste management uh, issues are more and more important. Um, answering this uh, certification, uh, as far as uh, it is uh, concerned uh, in Poland, it is definitely voluntary, uh, voluntary. So standardization organizations develop standards, of course, as best practices, they may, uh, that may or may be not be implemented. Uh, so it is, only voluntary and actually the certification uh, is globally um, voluntary. Uh, however, to be recognized, to be, um, to, to be competitive, uh, companies decide to certify um, compostable, uh, compostable products in Poland, usually following the European standard, uh, EN 134342. Uh, in Poland, this standard is um, implemented, so it's translated, and um, of course, we can use it um, in Polish language as well. But, um, Stakeholders in Poland certified products not only uh, to the um, to um, to the requirements requirements of the standard, but also um, they they are interested in ISO standards as well as American one. Uh, so so um, this is of course uh, voluntary, but uh, but uh, when we um, in the B two B market. Uh, providing uh, this kind of certification um, is uh, making the, the, the um, enterprises more transparent and, uh, and um, someone who can we trust as consumers as well. Thank you. I hope I, I answered uh, to this yeah. question. No, that's a, actually, it, it's actually, oh, would you like to, uh, be at, uh, Yes, you, yes, yeah. thank you. Yes, I would like to uh, add um, some uh, information because um, in Poland, we have uh, been obligated to segregate waste uh, for two years. So it's a um, new topic for public uh, authorities and uh, also society. Um, food waste is uh, obligatory, segregated uh, by households and institutions. Um, and recently, we have problem with um, proper segregation. So um, recently, we have uh, more and more educational programs aimed mainly at children who learn to how segregate food waste. But uh, it's not easy because the packages are often multi-material, which makes proper segregation difficult. So now uh, mm, we need more educational programs, uh, not only for the youngest, but for the mm, all generations. So um, it's, uh, it's for us, uh, I think it's uh, mm, the most important for um, authorities and, and uh, society, education. Yeah, it's, it's, I think that it's key for our success in the future. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. And actually this ties perfectly to our next question, because one, one thing that this uh, particular audience noted is that although every country has different challenges, um, you know, the, the education piece keeps on coming up, right? So, so uh, this participant noted that consumers education seems key. And, you know, we are now used to identify things on food, like food labeling, um, you know, sugar free, you know, diet beverages, for example. So, um, and I'm going to maybe direct this to the UK partner, um, any input on how how to properly label compostables packaging for consumers so that they can actually divert them to their proper end of life. So this is a question around labeling. Um, maybe one of our UK partners can respond and then we'll uh, 
we'll pass it on to other partners. And if you are responding, please make sure you turn on your video. Perfect, yes, Dr. Macarena. Yeah, well, well first of all, um, uh, of course, labeling was a, was a, a big problem uh, in, and it's part of the finding of our research that they need to be developed. Uh, but also uh, labeling can need to act in conjunction with all the other elements of the waste management of the disposal also from the communication that we give it to the from we give it to the consumers so so labels is a is an important part but it's not isolated and and i see this is the big problem at the moment because we have a product that uh, are voluntary label as Grashna mentioned um, and and that, that's good. That's a good sign. But if these labels are not coordinated with the consumer understanding, with the certification, with the waste management process, uh, are not really um, are not really working in the way that they should work. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's great, um, and I think this um, that's a great answer in terms of like there needs to be coordinated response because even with labeling, you know, if the other parts down the stream are not well coordinated, you know, you can have a great labeling that doesn't correspond to the reality of what's happening on the ground. So that is a very great answer. And actually, I'm going to bring in the Brazilian partners. Um, I don't know, Dr. Laís or uh, Dr. Sandra or maybe Rafaela, Dr. Rafaela Gutierrez. Um, you know, in your particular case in Brazil, you were working with waste collectors, right? So any thoughts in particular about, you know, kind of the, the connection between proper labeling and waste collectors and how this um, might potentially impact them? And I'm not sure if you can, oh, Rafaela? Yes, would you like to answer? Rafa? Yes, yes sure. Uh, th thanks, Tamara, that's a very good question. Um, I think in Brazil, we have a couple of uh, challenge that we need to face when we are talking about uh, bioplastics because we have a bigger problem about waste management. Uh, we don't have, most of the cities don't have the uh, proper uh, separate collection. So we don't have uh, food separate from the recycling from waste. So it's all together. So the waste pickers who are uh, most of the time informal, they, they are the ones who are uh, uh, serving this uh, uh, the, this service, and they uh, for them will be for now we the numbers are so low for uh, uh, bioplastic that is not affecting much. But in the future, when they will, uh, it's if the 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 uh, the production will re uh, uh, improve. Uh, it will be a challenge for them because they will need they will be the ones who are facing how to separate how to uh manage that and if this contaminates their material that's that's the loss for for their their uh their product production so education will be key in the future uh but it, in terms of labeling the material to identify and and most important for the waste speakers for so they can they can understand and see and separate properly and if there is a niche there is a a, a place for them to recover this uh, bioplastic or cell or send it to a, a compostable facility another situation uh, in brazil we don't have compostable facilities in most of the cities uh so that's also a challenge so if you are if you want to do a uh, produce a product that there is uh, you need to be in a specific uh temperature in a specific compostable uh compost uh facility we don't have that in brazil in place so that's also something that we need to work on that uh is it worth it to have those types of products when we don't have how to manage uh, uh properly in the end of the life so there are many questions that we need we still need to answer uh and of course education it's really key and uh, very important uh but sandra and Lays, if you want to uh uh compliment or say something about that oh, okay. i would say the same about our biggest challenge in brazil is the end of life of packaging and the 
problem with with speakers and population those that don't understand don't know uh these new technologies and it's so so important uh improvement in in education in in inclusion of uh of the the most marginalized groups for advancement so that everything goes well for innovation thank you um this is this is great and i think you know this is this uh further um strengthen and emphasize the need for because you know bioplastics packaging um you know whether it be compostable packaging in particular it's a global market i, I remember one of our colleagues in the uh, in the partnership team was talking about how they were in another country and they saw uh, a compostable packaging from the one of the countries uh, of the partner I, I i don't know was it like in europe but the packaging was actually from canada and so because this is a global market, it's important to understand kind of some of the infrastructural challenges in all of the different locations, um, you know, so so as you know, to ensure that we can actually create that circular economy that we are hoping for. So um, this is a technical question, and I'm hoping one of you can um, answer this. So this question is, do OXO degradable plastics fit into the bioplastics market? And if so, do you see this particular innovation fitting in any of the, the, the countries, um, the partner countries very well? So does anyone want to answer uh, this question? So OXO degradable uh, packaging, uh, whether you think this fits you know, um, in the bioplastics market sustainably, and if so, um, where? Perhaps in Brazil, it's it's already a challenge, <laughs> but um, well, yes. Well, it's, uh, it's a very good question and it's very controversial. Uh, the oxbio degrada degrada degradation, uh, it's not really a degradation. Uh, that means that uh, such degradations break down the plastic in small pieces uh, that are easy to degradable, but not necessary enough to be called biodegradable, you know? Then uh, it's, a, it's a kind of trick because you think that it's, uh, you, uh, it's really that you need to break the, the, this kind of uh, material in a small piece, but there are not necessary biodegradable. Thank you so much, Dr. Sandra. Um, that's a, that's a great question, a great answer. And so um, we are uh, going to wrap up with you know uh, a few more questions. Now, one of the things that that came up, you know, is um, with Social Innovation Lab because we're bringing so many diverse stakeholders, uh, many of whom may not necessarily agree. Is that sometimes Social Innovation Labs, you know, kind of unearth or like um, shines a light on new insights or new issues that we may not be aware of so did you have and this is a question for all of the partners and hoping maybe we can you know quickly answer uh, for for the each team is did you have findings that really surprised you that you did not expect um and what were they so um maybe we can go to uh we can do canada first and then we'll go uh poland and then uk and then maybe brazil if you would like to contribute to anything that was kind of surprising or a new insight yeah, um, I think this this seems kind of meta, and it's it's based on the quote that I shared at the end of my presentation. Was I I knew before that there were some disconnects within the system, but what I think the social innovation lab really showed, which I was really surprised by, was how many people don't normally talk to each other, even though it's really important for them to. Specifically, I think. A lot of the innovators who are creating really neat things and the, these cool technologies, they they aren't um, always able to talk to the people who are dealing with these materials throughout the whole life cycle. For instance, in the design, they might talk to some users, but they might not be really doing the testing that much with the facilities at the end. But I know that there are some new programs such as field testing programs that are coming up. And I think those types of initiatives can really hope, help close the loop because we need to kind of connect all the different parts of the cycle of the compostable plastics so that it actually is a closed loop. 
Hmm. Yes, that's a great question. Is that is that you know surprisingly people are not necessarily talking to one another in that system in that supply chain. So that's a great point. Um, any of our partners, um, anything that is new um, that you unearth during the social innovation lab process? I'm Maybe some sure. from Poland. Yes, please, <laughs> please, Dr. Tamara, it's a very, very difficult question because actually each panel uh, is interesting experience for all um, all of us, uh, the whole uh, Symbio, uh, Polish Symbio uh, project team. Uh, first of all, we are very positively surprised by a um, by the great commitment of our stakeholders, in, stakeholders, uh, stakeholders, sorry, <laughs> stakeholders, sorry, um, into the project, and especially a great uh, awareness of the environmental problems. They 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 want to um, choose compostable packaging to impact the global environment, to uh, improve waste management systems, to to and so on. So. Uh, this is uh, this is a great experience for us, and according to 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 the um, to the detailed answer, it's as I said, uh, each uh, panel is a huge number of ideas of of uh, small even details that that are very interesting. Um, however, we are we are glad that. Uh, uh, and maybe this is surprising that in Poland, uh, this market needs the basic support. So compostable packaging market need, need the basic support. I mean, the national strategy for the compostable packaging development. These are the basic documents that, that, that uh, still are um, a challenge uh, in our country. Uh, so, um, and... Uh, I would like to also to answer the, the, the previous question that in terms of the uh, huge environmental responsibility of our stakeholders, uh, according to, to the research results, there is no place in Poland for OXO biodegradable uh, packaging as we are still um, talking about this kind of, of packaging, we are still talking about the fossil fuel packaging, and it's of course impossible to, to produce the, the, the environmental friendly without microplastic compost using this kind of process. So, uh, so we, are, we totally uh, don't agree to, to use this kind, and it's of course um, um, the, the, the common opinion in, in the, the Poland and I think in Europe as well, yeah. Thank you. That's great because you answered two questions and it's so exciting to hear that in the in the in Poland, especially that the stakeholders were very, very motivated environmentally, you know, to make uh, to make this solution work in a sustainable way. So um, I'm wondering if any of our other partners would like to, um, you know, contribute to this question in terms of like anything that was surprising for you, um, you know, with this social innovation lab process. Yes, Dr. Lais. I, I would like only fin only only finish it. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a global it's a it's a, glo a global problem, uh, and um, uh, so we we can we can see the the importance of this methodology in, in, here in Brazil, specifically uh, about our challenges. Uh, to bring universe disclosure to companies as well uh, as to large masses or population in general, uh, it, it's important to democratize uh, democratize science innovation. Um, only then then we we, we move forward. Uh, it was and is being a great experience uh, in our participants uh, out of field, uh, bring us very exciting feedback. Uh, unfortunately, we had uh, we had little, uh, few government commitment, only only few contacts with local government. But uh, we understand that uh, only by joining force uh, as a, in the application on the social innovation lab, uh, we we innovate uh, thinking about the entire cycle, the entire chain. So I, I'm very grateful for for the single project and all partners group. I'm grateful for all the support. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, um, Lais. So uh, just maybe the UK team and then we'll answer one final question and then we will wrap up this uh, global webinar. So uh, UK team, any new insights or surprising insights that um, that were, you know, that were unexpected through your social innovation lab process? I don't know. <laughs> Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, this is a very uh, difficult uh, question because all the journey was uh, critical and very interesting. We got very interesting feedback, but um, I mean, adding to the, the supply chain collaboration mentioned for the uh, Canadian team, uh, I think uh, I think this is a, a key critical uh, thing, not only for the bioplastic, for all the novel products that they, they, they will launch to the market. They need this collaboration. They need to take into account all the different stakeholders and all the different levels to make this successful. And of course, we apply for the bioplastic sector, but if we want to move from a linear economy to a circular economy, this process of social innovation, they are really key uh, because you give a voice to the different stakeholders that also uh, put their ideas together. Um, so, um, and uh, on a different note, <laughs> regarding the oxobioplastic, uh, also degradable plastic, of course, e in the UK, there is conversation to ban uh, the uh, oxodegradable plastic. Um, there is no, at the moment, uh, space for them. Um, so, um, so, this is regarding the previous question as well. So that's great. Two questions in one. That is wonderful. So this is our final question because we only have five minutes and maybe I'm thinking we can maybe answer this in, you know, in a sentence um, or so. So in terms of moving forward in the future, you know, we talk about different solutions, the need for more networks and collaboration and democratizing, you know, innovation and science so we can work together in a sustainable and equitable way. Um, so what further research, you know, do you think should be pursued on this on this very important topic, you know, that that deals with alternatives to fossil fuel based uh, packaging. So any thoughts on further research, um, maybe just, you know, a sentence or two from each of the different countries that would be very very helpful so i'm wondering from canada yes sure <laughs> yeah i i think um one thing for further research would which really hasn't been explored yet because the so much of the focus has been on making more single-use type compostable plastic packaging is if there is a any possibility for this to be used more as reusables or some integration with products that are more durable. That's great. So higher value, higher value, um, reusable, compostable packaging. Wonderful. Okay. So great from Canada. Um, do we have any other volunteers who would like to share, you know, their thoughts in terms of future research, a uh, future research agenda that should be pursued on this topic? Yes. Yes, uh, in Poland, uh, we identified three urgent uh, solutions to be implemented uh, to stimulate, to foster the, the compostable packaging market. So the national strategy of compostable packaging, uh, market development, industry organization, integrating the stakeholders of the compostable uh, packaging um, supply chain and multi-sided digital B2B platform. And we wish to, to explore these uh, three directions in the future um, with, uh, with our stakeholders, um, of course. But uh, um, finalizing the, my, my sta uh, state, the, the statement, uh, I think that the huge problem and the big challenge for the future research is connecting waste management with uh, eco-designing uh, in terms of labeling, education, certification um, um, processes. So this is the, the huge challenge to, to meet the, the um, requirements of the circular economy through the proper uh, designing and in influencing for this kind of eco-designing the waste management possibilities. Yeah. That's great. That's great. So further research on some of the solutions that you have proposed um, in your uh, lab. Thank you so much. Um, can we have maybe our partners from uh, Brazil and then from the UK? And then we will be closing the webinar. Let me see. Our, oh, 
Brazil. Yes, Rafaela, would you like to contribute to kind of future research or uh, Laís? Laís, you can go. <laughs> oh, oh, you're, you're muted. muted. We still. Oh, Laís, oh you're still God. muted, yeah. Sorry, Great. sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, in our in our group, we 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 know some other groups in our field chemistry area. Uh, some scientists uh, in Brazil have focused on the use of agroindustrial agroindustrial waste for the production of compostable uh, packaging, as well as uh, Ellen, uh, working uh, they they scale the scaling scheduling of this process. Uh, it's a challenge, but uh, they are making use of practice of industrial symbiosis. Hafa, if you would yes, like to. So, uh, yeah, I, I think using what we already have, so ag agricultural uh, waste, that's something, we produce a lot of sugar cane in Brazil, that, that would be something that they are investigating. I, I would love to see more of that. Uh, but I, I would also want to see more studs uh, with waste pickers and how they can properly be included in the discussion when we are in, uh, including a new product in the supply chain and they they are the ones who will be dealing with that. So uh, I would love to see more studs and more uh, more actions related to the waste pickers and how they can be included in this all this amazing discussion. That's amazing and equity focused lens. And then finally, our UK partner, um, any future research that you think should be pursued on this topic? I believe we still have um, Macarena or Dr. Benny Chahiono. Oh, yes. Okay. Macarena? Yeah. Um, I think uh, from the recommendation that we produce from the, uh, that were based on the recommendation, of course, from the stakeholders, I think any of them uh, could be a, a future research, could be converted in a future research. Uh, rather in the research and development of these target um, specific uh, bioplastic or the uh, extending the, the research of life cycle or the, uh, the investigation in terms of investment of end of life infrastructure on the disposal and collection routes or, or in terms of behavior as well. Um, so, so there is a lot of uh, things that we can explore in the future. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. And on behalf of all of the partners, Canada, Brazil, UK, and Poland, we are so thankful for your participation, for your questions. Please keep um, please keep posted with our research. We are available on symbioresearch.com, and we look forward to continue to engage with you and to continue to work together to advance this important issue. Thank you again, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening good night. on behalf of all. Well. <laughs> Thank you, and good night. Bye. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.